How am I going to use node voltage analysis to derive the Thevenin equivalent circuit for this? So what we have here is this circuit. As you can see, we have two voltage sources here, uh, 5 volts and 10 volts, and we are supposed to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit as seen by R5. Okay. So the first step is we want to redraw all right, the Thevenin equivalent circuit all right, with the uh, load here being open circuit. All right, so let's uh, do that first. So I have a 5 volt supply here. All right, then I have my R2 followed by node 2. And I got a 10 volt supply here followed by node 1. Okay, then I got R4. And this is your uh, R1 here. So let me uh, label the nodes a bit more clearly over here. So this is your node 3, this is your node 2, this is your node 4, and this is your node 1. Okay, and what we want is we want to derive the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So to do that, there are two steps to it. First is the Thevenin's voltage. So the Thevenin's voltage is the open circuit voltage that I see from here. All right, and to do this, all right, and since I've already open circuit uh, the load, uh, section over here. I need to now use node voltage analysis to derive this VTH. Now to do uh, node voltage analysis, we start off by taking a reference. All right. So if I were to take 5 volts all right, as my reference, then node 4 can become my ground. All right. So I need to find the voltage at node 1 with respect to node 4. All right. And that will give me the VTH. So let's uh, go about doing this using the node voltage analysis approach. So the node voltage analysis basically allows me to draw a sort of super node, okay, encompassing uh, a section of the circuit. And then I can write equations that either conform to all the currents flowing into the node or all the currents flowing out of the node. So let's say I assume that all the currents flow in to the node over here. So I can derive the specific equations. Okay, so let's uh, go about doing that over here. So the first equation could be this, all right, the current flowing uh, from the node 3 to node 2. So I'm going to write the equations based on the nodes first and then we're going to substitute the actual values inside. All right. So here I can say that um, node 3 minus node 2 over R2. So that is the current flowing in this branch over here. Then the current flowing in through R1 would be plus node 3 minus node 1 over R1, all right, plus the current flowing from here, which will be node 4 minus node 2 over R4 equals to 0. All right, so now I have three uh, currents, all right, that all add up to 0 because they're all going into the super node. Okay, now what I can do next is to uh, go ahead to uh, substitute the node values with the values that we already know. So what do we know? We know that uh, node 3, okay, we know that node 3 is 5 volts, correct? Because node 3 is connected to here and this node 3 with respect to node 4 which is a ground. So node 4 is actually 0 volts. We know that node 1 is the voltage we want to find, correct? Because that is the point with respect to node 4 which forms VTH. So we can label this as V1 and we can say that node 2 is V1 plus 10, correct? Because it is 10 volts higher than node 1, all right? So using this information, I can now uh, populate my table over here to say that this equation can now be written as 5 minus V1 plus 10 over R2 plus uh, node 3 which is 5 minus uh, V1 over R1 plus uh, node 4 which is 0 minus node 2 which is V1 plus 10 over R4 equals to 0. Alright, so now uh, that we have substituted the values inside, we can see that we have one expression, one equation here with one unknown V1. Alright, once we find V1, we'll be able to solve for the Thevenin's voltage. So let's go ahead and substitute the resistor values. So we know the R2 is 2 ohm, R1 is 1 ohm, and R4 is 1 ohm. 
So substituting the values inside, all right, what you will get is 5 over 2 minus uh, V1 over 2 minus 5 plus uh, 5 minus V1 uh, minus V1 minus 10 equals to 0. All right, and let's simplify. So here we will have uh, minus 5 over 2 v1 uh, this is negative 10 uh, and plus 5 over 2 so negative here 7 and a half so negative 15 over 2 equals to 0 so what you will get is v1 will be equals to negative 3 volts all right so when you say v1 is negative 3 volts what does that mean this v1 all right is calculated with respect to node 4 being the ground Alright, so if I were to draw the symbol, alright, for the supply, it will be drawn as this way, alright, where we have taken the ground to be here, and this point here, V1 is considered negative 3 volts, alright. You can redraw it the other way, okay, and that will look like this, where you say that instead of, right, putting it with positive on top and negative below and negative 3 volts I can put positive below and negative on top and this will be considered as ground and this will be now considered as 3 volts okay so you can see that you can draw it either way as long as you know which direction is positive and which direction is negative this negative 3 volts that we get is because we are taking it with respect okay to the node 4 Okay, node 4 as the ground. Alright, so V1, okay, the, the voltage at node 1 is negative 3 volts with respect to the uh, node 4 over here. Okay, so that is why we get negative uh, 3 volts, which means that if I were to carry on with this same convention, then the, neg the ground is below and the source is drawn this way and it is negative 3 volts. I can choose to redraw it the other way, which is 3 volts in the other direction. So the ground is now treated to be on top. Alright, so either way uh, is fine as long as you know uh, your convention of positive and negative. Alright, in my next video, I'm going to show you the same circuit, but now we're going to take the 10 volts as the source. Alright, so look out for that video and compare both the approaches. You'll see that you get the same answer. Alright, it's just that you can take either source, alright, but you need to be careful of your reference voltage and make sure that everything is with respect to the reference voltage. Okay, so look out for that video and I hope that this clears up any uh, doubts that you have about solving this circuit here. Thank you. Bye.